All right, we're going to work on set notation and Venn diagrams, using them to help us write set notation. Uh, this question wants us to identify set A as 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Set B is a set of all prime numbers less than 20. So I know that 2 is a prime number, so it would have to go in the center. 4 is not. 6 is not a prime number. 8 is not a prime number. And neither is 10. So those are my elements of set A. Set B would be the list of all prime numbers less than 20. So 1 is a prime number. 2 is, I already have it written down. 3 is a prime number. 4 is not. 5 is a prime number. 6 is not. 7 is a prime number. 8 is not. 9 is not a prime number. 10 is not a prime number. 11 is a prime number. 12 is not. 13 is a prime number. So let's write it down. 14 is not. 15 is not. 16 is not. 17 is a prime number. And 18 is not. 19 is. So those are all my prime numbers that are less than 20. So the question wants us to eliminate or to list all of the elements in set B. So if I look at set B, I can find set B. This is my circle. So 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19 would all go to set B. Question 2 asks us to write down all of the elements of A union B, which would mean A or B. Anything is in set A or set B. So that would be everything that is in both circles. So all of those in both A or B would be elements of set in set A or B. And question three asks us to determine the elements that are in A intersect B, which would be the elements that are in both A and B. Intersection is another word. It's for and. And the only thing that's in both set A and B would be the element two. So that would be the elements of sets A and B. The second uh, thing says, a bag contains 26 tiles, one for each letter of the alphabet. Event A is drawing a tile, a tile with a vowel on it. Event B would be drawing a tile with the letters A, B, C, D, E, F on it. So I'm going to start with writing what's in event, event B. And put it in circle B. A is a vowel, so it will go in both A and B. And then I have the letter B. I have the letter C, not a vowel. D, not a vowel. E is a vowel. And F is not a vowel, so it will go over here. If I want to write the elements that are in both A and set A, that's going to be drawing a tile with a vowel on it. So I already have A, I already have E, I, O, U, and we'll go ahead and count Y because it's sometimes a vowel. So let's see what other letters in the alphabet we have. We have A, B, C, D, E, F. I need a G. It's outside. An H. I. It's already in there. A J. A K. An L. An M. An N. O is already in there. P. Q, R, S, T, U's already in there, V, W, X, I've already got Y, and Z. So I have all my letters of the alphabet listed in my Venn diagram. Now it wants me to find the probability that I choose A. The probability of A, there's only one A, so I have one out of a total of 26 tiles, because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Five, the probability of set Actually, I just got thinking about that. It doesn't want to know the letter A. It wants to know the probability of set A. So here is set A. I have one, two, three, four, five, six letters in set A. So that would be six out of 26. 
And I can reduce that by dividing by 2, 3 over 13. Question 5 wants the probability of set B. So if I look here, I have set B, which is circle B. I count the elements in there. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's 6 out of 26, which again reduces by 2, 3 over 13. Question 6 wants the probability of A union B, which means A or B. So if I count all the elements in set A or set B, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 elements out of 26, which could be reduced by 2 to equal 5 over 13. Question 7 asks for the intersection of A and B, which another way to write that is A and B. What is in both sets, A and B? And I see only two elements, A and E, so that would be 2 out of 13, or 26, which would reduce B1 over 13. Question 8 asks for the probability of the complement of A. And remember, that means not A. It could be written as prime or with a bar over it. So if I have six elements in set A, that means I have 20 elements that are not in set A. So 20 out of 26, which will reduce, reduce to be 10 over 13. And the last question says the probability of the complement of B. Remember, that can be written prime or bar. So if I have six elements in set B, that would give me 20 elements that are not in set B. So 20 over 26, which again reduces to be 10 over 13. So that's where, how the Venn diagram helps you get your probabilities. On this, this uh, is a theorem or a property, all right? It says probabilities of an event and its complement. Here it says the probability of an event and the probability of its complement must have a sum of one, and that's what goes right there. The second part of this statement tells us, so the probability of an event is one minus the probability of its complement, and that's why they wrote it here. It says the same thing. And the third part of the statement says, the probability of the complement of an event is 1 minus the probability of the event. So that's where this statement here comes in. That says the probability of the complement, 1 minus A. These questions want us to find the probability of the complement of A. Again, you can write it AC or A prime, or you can write A bar. Those all mean not A. So if I want to find the complement of A and I use this rule, I can say the complement of A, probability of the complement of A would equal 1 minus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.7. 11, if I want to find the complement of A, I would say the probability of the complement of A, and I can write that A bar this time is equal to 1 minus 1 fourth, which would be 3 fourths. Question 12. A number cube with sides numbered 1 through 6 is rolled. A is rolling a 5. Well, the probability of A, there's only one 5. That would be 1 out of 6. So if I want to find the probability of the complement of A, let's write it as A prime this time. That would be 1 minus 1, 6, which is going to give me 5, 6. And 13, a number cube with sides numbered 1 through 6 is rolled. A is rolling an even number. So the probability of A, what's the probability that I would roll an even number? Well, there are three even numbers on a die at a possible 6. Reduces to be 1 half. So the probability of, is a, of A is 1 half. To find the probability of the complement, I would use the rule. The probability of the complement of A, let's write A bar, equals 1 minus 1 half, which is going to be 1 half. 
again, I let, gave you the rules, all right? It says the universal set U is a set of all integers 1 through 20. You select one element U at random. Event A is choosing 2, 6, or 18. So the probability of A would be 3, because it has 3 elements, out of 20. What is the probability of the complement of A? Well, the probability of the complement of A, let's write A prime, would be 1 minus 3 over 20, which would equal 17 over 20. Here's another example. A bag contains a total of 10 marbles. Four marbles are black and three marbles are white. If event A is drawing a black marble, well, I know I have three black marbles, or four. And event B is drawing a white marble, well, I know I have three white marbles. I know a marble cannot be both black and white. Let's say I have... I have a total of seven, so I need three more marbles. So let's say the other three are red. They would not be in event A or C. What is the probability of A union B? Now remember, union means or. So how many elements do I have in both set A and set B? That would be seven over a total of ten. Here's another example. Set C equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Set D is all positive integers. What are the elements are what elements are in set C intersect D? Now remember that means they're in both C and D. Well let's change it. This will be C, this will be D. Alright? Negative 2 goes in set C, but it's not positive, so let's put in set C only. Negative 1 is not positive, so we'll put it in set C only. 0 is neither positive nor negative, so it goes in set C only. 1 is positive. 2 is positive. All right, well, and D is all the positive integers, so I could have 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. The question wants to know what are elements are in both set C and set D. So the only elements that would be in both would be 1 and 2. Last example. You roll two six-sided number cubes, otherwise known as dice, at the same time. Event A is rolling a 1 on both cubes. So I know that would be 1 and 1. What is the probability of the complement of A? Remember that C means complement of A. Well, there's only one way to roll a 1 and 1, so I have the probability of A, of rolling two 1s, would be 1 out of a total of 36, because remember we made our dice lattice. So if I want to know the probability of not A, it would be much easier to subtract from 1, like our rule showed us. So 1 minus 1 over 36. If you don't know it in your head, that you should, you can use a calculator. That would be 35 over 36. So hopefully today you've learned um, some more about set notation. You've learned that the complement and the event add to give you one, and you can subtract from one to get one that you need.